Your new album is called Time of My Life. Yes. And I read it's really authentic and honest. I've given my, the, the best piece of me, the most honest piece of me. I've worked, you know, very hard over the last 12 months to produce this record and I'm very proud of it. And, and it's a very, it's, it's an album full of love. It's not that I wasn't honest before, I was just writing, you know, and, and, and I, I, I was still learning how to be a songwriter uh, and, uh, you know, using imagination rather than actually digging deep and, and writing from my soul. So I, I've learned how to do that in the last few years and especially in this last 12 months. Okay, so we have to go a, bit, a little bit back. So with the boys on, boys on uh, theme at that time, 20 years ago, did yeah. you wrote there? Yeah, I wrote some of the songs. They were pop songs, you know. It was fun pop music. Uh, you know, uh, I hate to use the word disposable, but you know, it was, it was disposable pop. Okay, but um, when you got famous all of a sudden, how was it for you? It was a shock. Uh, yeah, I was 16 years old when I started in Boys Own, so it's a long time, but a very young age. And nobody taught us how to deal with that. There's no, there's no, you know, there's no rule book. There's a, you just got to learn for yourself. Uh, I hope I've dealt with it okay over the years. Um, and how did you handle the media? And how is your opinion now? I made mistakes. You know, I, I said things I shouldn't have said did things I shouldn't have done, you know, in, in, in uh, interviews and so on. But, you know, you learn, you know, you learn along the way. And, and to be honest with you, this 23 years later, only now do I really have I stood back and went, you know what, I didn't really know what I was doing in interviews, you know. And, and, and now, I'm, now I'm just trying to be as, as honest as I can be and, 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 you know, be aware, you know, be aware. Um, as a manager and a judge also, yeah. what do you have for advice for young people, how to handle the media? Well, I mean, I would be really, you know, I, I think, I wish we had got media training when we were younger to, to guide us and help us. So anybody in those shoes should really get media training. And you, there are press departments within the record labels and there's press companies and you use them, learn from them. It's very valuable. Mm. But you also have fans. Do you still have groupies at that time? That's changed a lot. Not so much. Back in the boys' own days, but not now. Okay, and how did you handle the groupies? Then? I was pretty respectable. I was very respectable, really. Uh, you know, Catholic Ireland brings you up a certain way. And, uh, yeah, I was, we were very respectable. Did you heard of the Beatlemania? Yeah. Yeah. Was it like this? There were times. I remember landing in Indonesia. <clears throat> And there were 10,000 people at the airport. They shut the airport down. Like, like shut, shut an airport down. It was pretty crazy. The army were, were brought in to, to handle the crowds. That was back in the boys' own big days. The same when we came into, yeah, I remember going into Rome to do a signing session and the police had to get involved. People were, there were thousands of people on the streets. So yeah, boys' own had that hysteria. Uh, maybe not as big as the Beatles, yes, but, but it was pretty crazy. And when the Beatles had it, they to, um, all people thought it was some kind of scandal because the girls are getting crazy and open-minded. Yeah. And yeah. What do you think? Well, I think, yeah, the Beatles, the Beatles changed music, really, the, the way that we listen to music. And uh, it, was, it was ballsy, it was gutsy, it was, you know, different. Uh, some saw it as the devil's music, you know, because it drove women crazy, yeah, but it drove everybody crazy. That's what music should do. It gets in on your soul like that. I love that. Um, back to the media and cinema. Did it change your mind personally how to handle the media and how do you think media has developed over the years? So? Well, I think it's changed so much because of social media. We now handle our own press. You know, we, we expose the pictures we want to expose and we, you know, we can, we, if somebody says something in a newspaper, we have the, the freedom to say, this is actually what I meant to say. This is what, this is not true. This is not. So, you know, there's, it's a two way street now. We have a voice that we did not have before, I guess. You posted something yourself. Yeah. Yeah, about um, how you are handling the media and how you answer the questions yeah. and now you're honest and it's just promoting your album. So, um, yeah. why did you do that? Why did you do it so open? Because it was an injustice what happened. I, I gave an honest interview and my words were changed. 
by, by the features editor in the newspaper. That, and that, that's not right, because I never said those things in that context. So, you know, I was lucky enough to get my hands on what I did say, and I published that. And, you know, that was fair. That's the right thing. You know, if I, if I was, you know, guilty of saying those things, then I couldn't do it. That would be, you know, that, that would be right. But the fact was I didn't, so that's why I made a point of that. So do you think everybody should use their own social media press instead of using the yellow press? From well, I mean, it's a two-way street. I mean, you know, they, we need them, they need us. So, you know, it's, it's, it's just how it's handled, and that was wrong, the way that was done. The way the interview was approached and what was expected, that was not. So, you know, the truth has to come out. You said we need them and they need us. Why? Well, because we have, you know, it's a great tool for us to get exposure. And, you know, to, when, we're, when we're promoting our records or our concert tours or whatever it may be, and they want to sell papers. But do we still have to need to use the yellow press? Or is it just, um, some people say we don't need the press anymore, we don't need TV anymore, we just need social media. So. Well, not everybody's on social media. So uh, until we're at a day that you know that everybody has a, uh, a device to be on social media until then and then even then you don't know if they're following the person or if they're you know it's it's you know uh, you just I guess you want to tick all the boxes make sure that you get absolute coverage but do you think every celebrity should be so honest and open and show everything personal now no not necessarily no it's up to people's people themselves it's just I went through a period of not But this is also a promoting, a promotion. Like when you are going to your, your statement last week. Yeah, no, that, 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 that was not promotion. That was just correcting something. Why I did the interview was promotion. But what they did was not, you know, what, the, what that person did in the paper. So all I was doing was correcting that. I wasn't looking to promote it. I just wanted the truth. But there are some celebrities, they post everything. Do you think that's... Yeah, yeah, look, everybody to their own. Everybody has their own taste, and, and I'm not into the, the kind of the, 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 the selfie thing as such. But I understand why people do, and that's fine. But I see the effect it has even on my children, you know, what the Kardashians have done, you know. I can't say it's, it's right. It makes us all very body aware and insecure. Because, yeah, it's hard to, you know, to, to, to follow that all the time. And, and we're, we're globally now, everyone's trying to follow that. And, you know, I think that's, it's a dangerous time. When you think, I have to, I know you don't want to hear it anymore, but I have to, two small questions about it. Um, how was it for you how the media handled your affair? What can I say? What can I say? I mean, there's no, there's no way I can answer that really without it coming across. Uh, you know, that's what the media do, you know. I decided to do something and they, you know, I, I made a decision and the media covered it. Hey, they, 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 you know, that's how they sell papers and that's, that's, it's all right. I expected it, you know. I'm not going to say it was wrong because, you know, I was responsible, I'm responsible for my actions. Um, the hacking scandal, just mm -hmm. because you live in London, did your phone were hacked? At the moment? Well, I didn't know at the time. Yeah. I found out afterwards. It was, uh, it's horrible. Yeah, it's, it's a horrible feeling to think you're being watched. But hey, we're, we're being watched every day and cameras and, you know, Big Brother is definitely watching all the time. You know, our, our phones are being hacked all the time. Everybody's innocent people. Our cameras, our, our emails. I mean, it's, it's, it's a scary world we live in. I have a friend who doesn't have any credit cards. He doesn't have a phone. He doesn't have a laptop. Doesn't like any of it. Doesn't trust it. Um, you can live like that or you can accept. Depends how you live your life. So it is a bloody scandal. It's, it's terrible. Your freedom is gone. People's freedoms are gone. But hey, this, we, we decide to go into the shop and buy the phone. It's our decision. I, I, think, I think we're very self-obsessed. This generation is very self-obsessed, you know. Body aware, fitness, health. Um, I, yeah, definitely at a time when, you know, a man is trying to, you know, look healthier, be fitter, with his clothes on or off. Um, you know, the Daniel Craig, James Bond generation, you know. Everybody wants to look like Daniel.
and James Bond and Casino Royale. All this is this is kind of the way men feel and women. Well, well, I mean, you know, it changes all the time. It's you know, one minute it's it's curvy Kardashian, and the next minute it's waif model. You know, it's it changes all the time. It's it, everybody to their own. I think you know. I would like you know, it would be nice for people not to feel so body aware in that sense that they that you know that they're concerned by it and how they should look because they want to follow how somebody looks on social media or something. It's uh, it's that's that's very sad, you know. <clears throat> what do you think about headlines just um, for example last week again your statement you wrote a whole lot of things um, but they just took um, Ronald Keaton does regret his um, the end of his marriage and that yeah. was the headline of all what I said was I never said that I, I regretted the end so I was correcting what they had written of course they'll take whatever you know words they want from that and print it so it's it's you know Again, a manipulation of, of your words, and, and, and you know, that's, that's what some media do very well. Uh, it's how you handle that. You can ignore it and just accept it that, oh, it's okay, or you can stand up and tell the truth, which is what I did. Um, it's your choice if you want your words you know, to be true and corrected. But do you think why people, like normal people, are so interested about, about honesty or what other celebrities doing? And so it's intriguing, it's interesting. Why we bought those albums years ago? Why, you know, the mystery. We want to know how the other half lives. You know, how the superstar, how the celebrity lives. It's intriguing, it's interesting. But superstars are also some kind of idols. To some people they are, depending who they are. Some, some aren't, some are, are weirdos. Some are strange and that's why that's interesting. Some are, you know, they live weird, dark lives, but that's interesting for some people. We live in such a varied, brilliant world that all walks of life are interesting to all walks of life. What's interesting to me is not necessarily interesting to you, you know, so we all have our own opinion and taste. And uh, that's why social media is so massive, because we have immediate access to everything, everywhere, all of the time. But what makes a scandal a scandal then? Uh, something that isn't the norm, um, different things, an injustice, a crime, a, uh, a breaking story, something exciting, a new relationship, a breakup, a marriage, a, a dating, uh, a kiss and tell, who knows. I, a lot, uh, uh, I read a lot about scandals now, so um, definitely it's mostly sex, drugs and crime. Yeah, right, okay. But there are so many other things in the world. Why are they so interesting? Because it's, it's, it's sexy and sex sells. That's the thing. You know, I work a lot for charity and it's hard to sell charity because it's not sexy. You know, and that's, that's, that's a human feeling and it's, it's, it's hard at times. But that's why that all works. You know, uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's a tough thing, but you've got to deal with it. But you say it's sexy, but at the same time, sex is always shocking. Like, uh, the people are... No, what I mean is sexy. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? So, like, crime is sexy. You know, uh, what rock stars do is sexy, you know? You know, what... Yeah, so that's... It's easier to sell that. People want that all the time. You know, that they crave it. Which, I'm not, I'm not condoning and saying it's right, but that's, that's what that works. Um, now that you're doing your own thing or posting things in your kitchen or something, um, what is with the paparazzis from? It's okay. Paparazzi's all right. Some countries are different to others. Some paparazzis are, you know, tougher than others. It's all right. I mean, I don't have a problem with the paparazzi. I guess if I was hiding something, I'd have a problem. I guess that's when you've got to worry about the paparazzi. But is it still the same like in the 90s? That's changed a lot. Because we do a lot of our own paparazzi, you know, <laughs> if that's the word. You know, you're taking so many pictures all the time that you can, you know, you're doing the job for them almost. So, um, how often are you posting? I'm, I, I should be posting more, but I don't. I think I post, like, when was the last time I posted a picture? Uh, if I check my Instagram, I posted my last picture two days ago. And before that, I posted three days ago, so that was good. 
but every day they say you should do at least one post. I, I posted something about my tour this morning, tour dates on sale, pre-sale. I mean, it's, it's a great tool when you've got a record coming out and stuff like that. But yeah, I've got to get more. I'm getting better at it, but I'm not, I'm not totally you know, across it like some people are. Is there anything you want to say about scandals? No. Look, it's what makes, you know, it sells papers. Um, you know, sometimes I'm part of it, sometimes I'm re reading it. I'm, you know, I'd rather be reading it than be part of it. <laughs> I'll tell you that. But you're not going out and buy like something like the Sun? No, I don't, I don't, I don't, I actually read papers, but I don't go out and buy papers. I don't generally, uh, everything is there nowadays online on my phone. Uh, I have a few apps on my phone that give me my daily updates. Try, I try to keep in the loop. But I tend I don't go out and buy papers. No. Do you Google yourself? Do I? Google, yes. Google, not really. Not unless I'm told I have to check something out that's been written. Then I'll check it out. But I don't Google myself as a like a frequent thing. Uh, are you no. sometimes shocked what people are writing about you? Yeah, sometimes sometimes I'm surprised, sometimes I'm shocked. But sometimes I'm 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 happy about it. Sometimes I'm pleased. Yeah. But in the end, isn't it then better to do it by yourself? Um, what, to tell, give the news? Yeah, yeah that's right, absolutely. I, I'm, you know, but like I say, it's a two-way street. Sometimes you need it. Uh, but yeah, sometimes you post the news yourself. Yeah, because it, you definitely have control over that. More control. I'm, I'm going to Australia to be a coach on The Voice this, oh. this year. Yeah, next week I start, yeah. That's exciting. Hmm, it'll be fun. Well. You didn't, you're going to start to just record it. Yeah, you'll start recording next week in Sydney. I'm looking forward to it. Why Australia? Not, uh... My wife's Australian. I like going back to Australia.